So, let's take this one step at a time. You just installed Unreal and there should be a shortcut icon that looks something like this floating around on your desktop. Click it, and it will take you to a screen that looks like this. Now from here, if you want to create a new project, you will see there are many different presets available. Really just pick whatever one looks interesting to you, it's not a death sentence if you pick the wrong one. These are really just shortcuts to help those of you who kinda know what direction you want to go. And I think the most important thing for you as a beginner is to just relax and get familiar with the new engine. This should be exciting and fun, not stressful. So for the next few minutes, just sit back and enjoy while I demonstrate the different modes that you can start from to jumpstart your project in Unreal. If you click on any one of these modes, you can give your project a name, the defaults are usually fine, hit create, and once it's done loading, within 5 seconds, if you just click the green arrow, you can immediately start playing your new game. Usually you use WASD to move around and the mouse to change direction, and sometimes you need the left or right click to control where you want to go, but generally every demo scene allows you to just play and explore around immediately just like this. So the first example is first person view, which is a great way to start if you're looking to make a game like Halo, Overwatch, or Counter-Strike. The second example is third person view, which is great if you're trying to make a game like Fortnite, or Metal Gear, or Dark Souls. Top down is perfect if you're trying to make an RPG like Starcraft or League of Legends, and vehicle is great if you want to make a game centered around piloting or driving cars or jets or spaceships. Handheld AR is obviously if you're working with augmented reality, it's really designed to go with apps for the iPhone and Android operating systems. Virtual reality is when you want to use OpenXR for desktop, console, or mobile apps that allow features like locomotion, snap turning, grabbable and interactable objects with resonance and spatial audio. Now under film and video you will see we have a few different options. Of course we have the empty blank world, we have virtual production which has functionality for VR scouting, SDI, and live compositing. If you want to kind of preview a live event with a virtual production using DMX protocol. It's a good starting point to kind of see what your live show might look like using professional lighting consoles. And camera VFX which includes three maps for getting started with LED volumes, two for corner immersive stages, and one with a curved LED wall. And display is for multi display functionality with a cluster of PCs. Under architecture we have a blank presets which just contain empty space. And here we have ArcViz which is for architectural visualization workflows to help see the exterior or interior of your designs. Design configurator is a good template to use when you want to toggle between different possibilities for architectural designs you are considering before before you finalize the details. Colab Viewer provides a way for you to navigate and interact with various desktop platforms for VR. It's a great starting point for collaborative industrial and architectural projects. Handheld AR is very similar to all the other AR options before this, but this one is a little more specified for plane detection and light estimation. Under Automotive, again we have a few blank presets which just contain empty space. We have the Photo Studio which has good presets for cinematic and photographic environments that you can cycle through or adjust. The Product Configurator is a great way to set up a scene where you can customize different variations of a product that you might want to pitch to a customer. The Colab Viewer provides navigation and interaction with various desktop VR software. And Handheld AR, again, is like all the other ones, just designed with product placement in mind. But again, since I don't have any AR set up, it's not going to show me anything. Lastly, the simulation category has the traditional blank empty preset, another handheld AR preset that, again, I do not have set up, and the virtual reality preset that is designed to be used with OpenXR for desktop consoles and mobile applications. At any point, if you want to open a new level from the scene, you can go to File, and all of your level project options will be there. New gives you the chance to start a new blank environment from scratch. Blank basic environment is usually the one you want. You also have empty open world which has almost nothing in it, and a basic environment without backgrounds. And then you have the totally empty void with nothing in it at all. If you have already created a level before that you want to load, you can do that by selecting Open. You can grab various assets on your computer with this, save the current level, or save it as a new level. You can also save everything all together, or you can save specific pieces of the scene one at a time with this. You can import FBX and OBJs with this option, and you can export entire scenes with this one. If you only want to export one selected object at a time, you can do that with this, or you can create an entirely new project with this. If you want to open an old project, you can do it with this, or turn a project into a zip to send to a teammate. You can find all of your recent projects over here, or close the whole thing with the exit option. So, those are all the demo scenes that come with Unreal out of the box, and how to open, save, and close new ones with the file menu options. I really hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.